Ciao everyone, today is the Ides of March, 15th of March. The Ides of March is the very day where Julius Caesar was assassinated into a conspiracy planned by 23 of his fellow senators. He fell dead right in his place. And now we're going to see a reenactment by an historical group, the Gruppo Storico Romano, which will reenact the actual assassination of Julius Caesar right in the very location where that happened. And the location where this happened is here. This place today is called Largo di Torre Argentina. It's an archaeological site surrounded by a street and it included four temples dedicated to four different divinities. And right by this temple, there used to be a building which was used as a temporary location for the senators to gather. It was a temporary senate while the official senate in the Roman Forum was being restored. Anyways, why was Caesar killed? Because with time he gained so much power and popularity that he became a hateful person from the point of view of his fellow senators. The same senators that eventually organized this conspiracy and killed him. This reenactment shows the events leading to the assassination of Caesar and everything starts with the senators. You need to imagine that at that moment Caesar was in Gaul. The, that corresponds to modern France today. Gaul was a province of the Roman Empire and here the senators are discussing about Caesar. They declare him public enemy if he didn't dissolve his legions and return back to Rome. Caesar and his supporters considered this such a profound injustice. And what did he decide to do? He decided to march into Rome together with his legions, which were so loyal to him. And this is when the civil war started. A civil war led by two main opponents, Julius Caesar on one side and Pompey his enemy on the other. Long story short, Caesar won over Pompey and at that point Caesar had no obstacle whatsoever and was appointed dictator for life in 44 BC. He also designated a successor just like a king, instead of having someone elected by the senate. All of these things together gave the senators the feeling he wanted to overthrow the republic and gather all the powers in the hands of one single person, himself. That is why a group of senators decided to put an end to all of that and organize a conspiracy to kill Caesar. And here we are, this is the day of the Ides of March of the year 44 BC. The Ides of March means March the 15th and everyone is gathering at the Senate. People are in the streets, just outside of the building. It all seems just like a regular day like any other. But actually Caesar had very bad nightmares that night. Something was telling him that that was not going to be a very good day. And he initially decided to remain at home and don't go to the Senate. But then someone comes to his place, someone he really trusted, Brutus. And Brutus convinced him to actually come to the Senate because there were so many important things to discuss that day. Caesar really trusted Brutus and he would never have imagined that actually Brutus was one of the organizers of the conspiracy against him. And here he is, Caesar gets to the Senate together with Mark Antony. Mark Antony, with an excuse, is kept outside of the Senate building and Caesar walks in alone. On his way to the Senate, Caesar meets the soothsayer Spurinna, the one dressed in black, and he tells him, Caesar, beware the Ides of March. But Caesar didn't want to pay too much attention to what Spurinna said. He said, the Ides of March are here and I'm still alive. And Spurinna replied, yeah, the Ides of March are here, but they're not over yet. And finally, Caesar reaches the rest of the senators. One of them gets closer to him. Here he is. He is appointed to be the person that will give the signal to start the conspiracy. He pulls his vest, Caesar says, this is violence, and then there you go. All, all the senators, 23 of them, start stabbing Caesar, one stab each, so that they could distribute the blame of what they were doing. Caesar at first gave resistance, but when he saw that Brutus took his knife out and stabbed him as well, he said, tu guacque, brute, fili me. Even you, Brutus, my son. That was such a big disappointment that he eventually stopped giving resistance and he covered his face because Caesar knew death is not something nice to see. The conspiracy took place and Caesar was dead. According to the historians of the time, Caesar fell at the feet of a statue, the statue of Pompey. And that's how we know where the actual location of this assassination was. The statue was in the Curia of Pompey, a building which is for the most part underground right now, but just a few meters away from the scene you're seeing. 
Anyways, outside of the Senate building, the news of Caesar's death was already spreading among the crowds. The conspirators came out the Senate and tried to explain that what they just did was actually a triumph of freedom and liberty, because Caesar was turning everything into a dictatorship. But the crowds of the Romans didn't buy this story. And the conspirators did not succeed in calming the crowds down. In fact, they all left the city shortly after. The first part of their enactment took place in Largo, Argentina, where the actual assassination took place. Now we're moving on to our next stop, which is going to be in Via dei Fori Imperiali. And now the procession starts. The body of Julius Caesar is below that red cloth, and now about a hundred people in super realistic costumes will take the body on a funerary procession into the Roman Forum. We are in the middle of the procession to go to Via dei Fori Imperiali. It does feel a little bit like a funeral. The Vittoriano monument, of course, was not there in ancient Rome, but this monument with this sky, it makes the whole thing so much more dramatic and emotional. Can you hear these ladies screaming? These are representing the so-called prefiche. They were ladies whose job was to scream and cry during funerals. And hearing them screaming live, just like this, gives you the idea of what it would feel like to have those ladies actually screaming at funerals. It really makes the whole situation much more dramatic and much more emotional. From Largo, Argentina, where Caesar was assassinated, we walked all the way to Piazza Venezia and then from Piazza Venezia through Via dei Fori Imperiali, the street of the Imperial Forums. And now we're heading to the place where the actual funeral of Julius Caesar took place, which is into the Roman Forum. Will we ever get tired of walking through the Roman Forum? No, never. This place has been the stage to so many incredible historical events that still affect the way we live and speak today, including the funeral of Julius Caesar. Look at us, we are doing a reenactment of this funeral and we all feel so sad and a little emotional about it, even though this happened 2,000 years ago. We like to imagine the sorrow of all the Roman people around us while Servilia, Caesar's wife, Brutus and Mark Antony gave their speeches. And Mark Antony's speech also inspired Shakespeare himself to make a tragedy out of it. This is where the funeral of Julius Caesar took place, right in this location. What's left today is the basement of the temple dedicated to Julius Caesar, which was the right spot where his funeral pyre took place. And still today, flowers are left to Caesar. And this is where the reenactment ends. It's been an incredible experience and we recommend you follow this next year if you happen to be in Rome on the Ides of March. It's been a very emotional experience to see things come alive. We hope you enjoyed this video and let us know in the comments what was your favorite part. Personally, my favorite part was the procession where those ladies dressed in black were screaming all the time. That was very strong. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao!